very good afternoon to one and all from inspira research association as we all know that now it is along with three basic needs that is roti kapda and makan the fourth essential basic need is internet now this webinar is an initiative to stay aware and safe in the virtual world having a great speaker adds value to the efforts we feel proud to introduce respected dr varun kapoor sir ips as our keynote speaker today sir is blessed with an illustrious profile and various achievements in the world of cyber security he holds a degree of be from tricky then joined police service in 1991 and allotted madhya pradesh cadre he has served as a uh, sp in three districts mm -hmm. dig in three ranges and adg in one zone sir is currently serving as adgp rustam ji armed uh, police training college indore he has a vast international experience training experience and won various police medals sir is also a communist and columnist and associated with research and publications too he has won various awards of high repute for his contribution to cyber security and holds various world records too it is indeed a pleasure and an achievement for our community to have him with us here today we welcome you once again sir and now i would like to request dr varun kapoor sir to start with the session and enlighten us through his versatile experience thank you sir yes sir can hear me and do you want me to speak in hindi or in english or in both sir uh, actually most of the participants are from outside uh, i mean south and so english more english and less hindi okay so i'll speak in english there's no problem with me anyway i hope you can all hear me good afternoon uh, to all of you who are participating in today's webinar in a very important topic we are together here today to talk about uh, cyber crime and the security which is associated with it that is cyber security and uh, uh, according to me a very important topic a very relevant topic a burning topic a topic we should really talk about and do something about and as soon as possible that will be even better uh, my introduction maybe he didn't mention it ravi but uh, i have worked in five continents as a police officer uh, i have worked in five continents i have not gone there for uh, just roaming around or doing some training or something like that i worked in five continents as police officer in europe in africa in north america in um, south asia and in of course central asia uh, so having worked in all these places all over the world and having seen the security situation security scenario and uh, the crime situation all over the world i can tell you one thing that uh, cyber crime if you have to choose the one of the two top threats to public security in today's era and definitely in the age to come even more but in today's era if you have to identify one or two top security threats to public security one of them will be cyber security it is such a big problem it is not such a small problem but unfortunately we human beings take everything from the physical world point of view you know what the world around us the real world we we compare everything in this world there are no dead bodies uh, falling in the cyber space there is no you know uh, while in crime going on there is no shooting there is no um, uh, rape there is nothing like that which can excite us disturb us so we take it very easy we believe it is uh, nothing chota mota maybe something small somebody is losing some money some stalking some bullying that's it but believe me i have experience all over the world i can tell you that is one of the top threats to public security in the time to uh, my talk ahead i will try to explain to you why i am saying that but it is one of the biggest threats to public security this uh, i can share from my own experience with all of you and uh, it's high time that we start realizing you know, because everything is not the physical world nowadays you know physical world is something very small now but anyway the sooner we realize the better it is and uh, today it's a time that we can talk about it and start thinking about it so what my talk is going to be first i'm going to talk about why it is such a big threat cyber security cyber crime why we should take it so seriously and what we should do about it that's the first part the second part i would like to introduce you to some concepts of cyber security um which i think you should know even if you don't know already then um, you should know again uh, if even if you know it and third is then i will talk about some cyber crime which is occurring in today's era of lockdown of this uh, 
pandemic in time. Uh, so this is how my talk will go. After that, uh, if you have any questions and if I have the answers, I would love to answer them. Okay. So this is uh, my flow of my conversation. Let us start immediately. We don't have that much time, so we must get down to the point as soon as possible. Uh, first thing, I've told you, very big threat to public security, cyber security, right? And um, um, I believe, my belief, my experience tells me that there is only one key to cyber in, ensuring in, in uh, your own security in cyberspace for all citizens. Actually, there is only one key, and that key is awareness. Their only key to cyber security is awareness. Why I'm saying that, that also I will tell you in the time to come. But according to me, it may be the most important, definitely, but it may be the only key for securing yourself in cyberspace, that is your own awareness. So if it is awareness that is what is important, then let's start being aware. Let's start talking about it. Let's start thinking about it. And then most important, let's start doing something about it, which we, uh, most of us don't do. I'm not uh, saying uh, people are here. I don't know your profile. I don't know who you are. So I'm not in a position to actually comment on your level of awareness and your level of preparation and your level of uh, um, uh, thinking in this respect. So uh, excuse me for that. But I will assume that all of you are not very aware. So let me start from that because some of you may not be and most of you may be. So anyway, I believe that the only key to cyber security is awareness. And so we better start thinking and working on those lines. That's the first thing. Second thing I would like to just uh, share before I start, I'm going to speak to you as a police officer. I'm a police officer with 29 years experience, right? And I have um, 10 years experience in cyber crime, cyber security. And that also out of my own choice. I've never been posted in cyber cell, cyber crime, cyber security unit, never. I have done it out of my own choice. 10 years back, I started it just as something new. Cyber crime was just coming up then, 10 years back. Just imagine, okay, did you ever hear about cyber crime? I doubt if any one of you did. But 10 years back, it was something very new. And all of us were just trying to think about it. So I thought, let's, it's something new. Let's start. Let's do something about it. 10 years have passed. I worked in this field out of my own choice. It has never been my direct responsibility, as I said. It's not my job. It was not my job then. It is not my job even today. Even if I'm not with you today and speaking on this topic, it would make no difference to me because I, I'm not paid for this. This is not my uh, my job. This is just my passion and mission. And uh, after all these years I spent here, so I am here with you uh, talking about cybersecurity out of my choice and out of my own mission and passion. Actually, I have worked in a number of fields, uh, out of, again, out of my own choice, uh, so international policing, field policing, um, police training, uh, community policing, all those have been part of my job sometime or the other, and I've done lots of work there. But many things which have not been part of my dog job directly, maybe women's security, narcotics, um, wildlife conservation, um, suicide prevention, uh, traffic improvement and management, I have done a lot of work in all these fields then uh, out of my own interest and uh, uh, lots means really lots but the maximum cyber crime cyber security it is very close to my heart so uh, i will be addressing you on cyber security as a police officer i do not pretend to be some very big computer expert neither do i claim to be some gadget guru and neither am i saying that i'm some big software wizard i'm not I'm just a police officer with 29 years experience. 10 of those have been in cyber security. Very few police officers in India or maybe the world have that much experience in this field. Uh, 10 years. Okay. So, um, so that then I believe that as I'm going to speak to you as a police officer, most of the things I'm going to talk to you are things of common sense. Correct? Because if you have to, if your own security is what is at stake, and if it is policing which is important, then only one sense is important. You know it very well. That sense is your common sense. Right. So I'm going to talk to you common sense things. But the unfortunate part is when this crisis comes, when the problem comes, when the danger comes, the first sense which deserts any human being is also common sense. That's very unfortunate. But that's how it is. So what I'm claiming is that I'm going to talk to you about common sense things, things which you may already know some of it, some of it, or I may even say most of it, or I may even go to the extent of saying all of it. But even if you know all of what I'm going to say today, I request you. So listen to it again once more. Why? Because once you listen to one thing again and again, it becomes part of your system. And that is what I want to happen. That what I'm going to say today in respect to cybersecurity, even if you know all of it, listen again, make it part of your system because this is what I want. Why do I want it? I will tell you. See, when the danger comes, when the threat comes, when emergency comes, maybe a natural calamity, maybe accidental situation, maybe a crime situation, what is important, most important for your own security, your response to the situation. 
correct? How you respond to the situation, that is what determines whether you will be able to protect yourself better or no. Suppose somebody is standing in front of you with a knife. Are you going to start thinking what you're going to do? If you start thinking, you may be too late. If you start doing something about it, you might be able to secure yourself in a better manner. Very simple. And when do you start doing something immediately? When it is automatic, when it's immediate. Then you may be able to secure yourself in the best possible manner. And when is that response automatic and immediate, friends? When it is part of your system. Nobody has to come and tell you. There is somebody standing in front of a knife, with you with a knife. Do something. Either flee or fight. Do it. Does somebody, but somebody tell you? No. You do it automatically because it's part of a system. And that is the best response and that may save you from that threat which is in front of you. Correct? So that's what I want. Whatever I'm going to say, even if you know it, listen to it again. You might be knowing most of what I'm going to say. I can deny that. But then listen again. You may be already enlightened people. Listen again, make it part of the system, give an automatic response, because that is the best response, even in a cyber crime situation. And that is the response which people are not giving, unfortunately, and waiting for it to be too late. And then you can do nothing about it. So listen, listen carefully, listen again, even if you know it, make it part of the system and give an automatic response. I would request you. That is the first thing I would like to say. Secondly, I would like to go into the fact that I said before, that's one of the biggest threats to public security in today's time and in times to come, it will be even more. Why did I say that? Let me tell you. And again, I'm going to, whatever I'm telling you, it's out of my own experience in this field. I have not read any American author who has said something. I have not read any, anybody else or somebody else's research, my own research, my own experience, my own findings, my own innate sense. That's what I'm going to share with you. Okay, it's nobody else's in experience is nobody else's saying it's my own. That's all I'm going to share with you. And if you believe and like what I'm saying, good. If you don't, then you can find your own way. But what I'm sharing with you is out of my own experience. That's all I'm, I'm trying to say. Okay, so in my experience, why do I feel it is one of the biggest threats to public security? I have seen crime all over the world. I told you I have dealt with all types of crime all over the world. So dealing with all types of crime all over the world, seeing that crime, I can tell you one thing. Why is this uh, such a big threat? Because it's a different crime. Such a crime has never happened anywhere, any part of the world ever before. I have, I have not seen it. I told you, I've seen crime all over the world, dealt with it. So it is a crime which is different from any crime which has ever happened anywhere in the world. That is why the security systems, the police or the law enforcement agency, whatever you call it, they're all uh, in a very big fix. Uh, they don't understand what they can do best to secure the citizens because it's a different crime. Similarly, the citizens themselves are at sea trying and at quandary to find out what they should do to secure themselves in a better manner because this type of crime has never happened before. Nobody can understand it so well. So because it is different, it is such a big threat. Now, why is it different? Let us talk about that. There may be many reasons of it being different, cybercrime. But the main reason why it is different, now just listen carefully what I want to say. Why is it different? I will tell you, it is different because it is not a crime of the real world, of this world, asli dunya, vastavik dunya, real world, actual world, whatever you say, this world, this physical world in which we live. It is not a crime of this world. It is a crime of a different world. It is a crime of this world. Digital world, cyber world, virtual world, a device based world. It is a crime of this world. And if you ever think that this is not a world, this is just an activity which we are involved in, then please think again. If you just say that I'm making a phone call, I'm just doing an activity. Yes, of course, you're doing an activity. I'm just chatting with someone on WhatsApp. It's just an activity. Yes, of course, it's an activity. But while you're doing these activities, you're using a device. And through this device, you're connecting to a world. You're born in the real world, you connect to the virtual world. And that is also a world. Never be in that doubt that it is not a world, it is just an activity or something which you do to uh, entertain yourself, to be happy, whatever. It is a world, as much as this world. And in the real world, is full of crime, criminal, dangers, problems, challenges. Is it not this world in which we live? Yes, it is. This world has enough of all these things. So does this world. It has enough crime, criminals, challenges, dangers, threats, everything. As much as the real world, maybe even more. But the worst part is you cannot even see them till it is too late. 
you feel it's all fun and games you means please don't think that i'm saying you i mean people everyone so i'm referring it as you okay so don't take it like that that a you means you you means all okay so if you ever think that this is just fun and games there is no problem there is no threat there's no danger just because you can't see them that doesn't mean they're not there they are enough and they're even more than the real world and you can't even see them till it's too late nobody is going to come in the virtual world and shoot you with a weapon but you may still lose your life you heard about blue whale challenge and all those kind of deaths in which so many innocent children just lost their lives they didn't even know they were playing a game right in the virtual world nobody is going to come with a knife and try to rob you but you will be robbed in an even worse manner and you will not even know it and once it's over once the crime is done you can then keep on trying and keep on trying to catch the criminals you might succeed but the crime is there the crime is happening so if you have to prevent the crime you have first realize there's a different world full of challenges criminals crime dangers threats more than the real world you can't even see them till the last moment now all these things combine to make a big problem for for us humans why okay why is it it's a world different world you may ask me okay it's correct you you are saying that we agree it's full of crime criminals dangers and threats okay we agree to that also we can't even see them till it's too late we agree to that also but then also why is it such a problem i can give you the answer only in one word because we are all human beings that's why it's such a big problem what do i mean i will tell you we are human beings we have got instincts behaviors attitudes reactions actions all made for what for the real world we are born in the real world we have to live in the real world right hum asli duniya mein paida hote hain hum asli duniya ke liye paida hote hain so all these instincts behaviors attitudes reactions whatever you may say are all tailored for the real world they are unfortunately not tailored for this world which is also a world as i told you right everything tailored for the real world and when you start applying all those things in the virtual world you are going to get into trouble i'll give you an example there is an instinct which all of us have being humans we have that instinct you can't change it we are humans you will have that instinct what does that instinct say what you see is what you believe what you hear is what you believe because you have seen it you have heard it you aapko dikhta hai ya aapko jo sunta hai aap us pe vishwas karte ho and on basis of that then you form an opinion then you take an action make a reaction whatever attitude behavior everything tailored basis of what on what you see or what you hear because you believe it because you have seen it and heard it correct instinct you can't change it now if you start in putting that instinct because being a human it will be there into this world what is going to happen you are maybe some say at some point of time you're going to make a mistake because in this world everything you see or everything you hear is not the truth or maybe you can be made to hear anything you can be made to see anything and then if you take any action reaction attitude behavior opinion you may make a grave mistake and many people do and that is the basis of crime cyber crime okay so you tell me any cyber crime which has happened with any person i will take you point in point of time to a point when that person believed what he saw or heard or rather believed what he was shown and what he was made to hear and then did something and became a victim of cyber crime so change your mindset when you are in the virtual world you have to have a different set of attitudes behaviors actions reactions instincts is difficult to do very difficult because we are humans it's not so easy to change your instincts but you will have to otherwise you will be sooner or later in some trouble so that's what i'm saying if you know what i'm saying listen again make it part of your system give an automatic response it's a different world recognize it it's full of crime criminals challenges and dangers understand it you can't even see them till the last moment realize it and change your mindset if you don't then you will be taking a big chance okay now one more last thing before i go into my presentation that is who is responsible for your security in the virtual world who takes action to make you secure let's talk about for 2 minutes then we move forward okay i will start with who is responsible for your security in the real world in which we live the physical world who is responsible who takes action to make you secure in this world you yourself we take actions ourselves from morning to evening night till we sleep we do it keep doing things to keep ourselves secure in the real world without even realizing 
and without even anyone telling us because it's part of a system, right? When you go out of the house, you lock the house. Does anyone tell you to lock it? Nobody tells you to lock it. It's a part of a system, you do it. If you cross the road, nobody tells you to look left and right, but you look left and right. Otherwise, you'll have an accident, security measure. You go to a city at night, will you enter a, a dark alley? You will not, you know? So these small, 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 they are all security measures, which me, you, all of us take from morning to night to keep yourself secure. Right, so you take measures to keep your secure, yourself secure. Your family makes efforts to keep you secure. Your um, community society makes efforts to keep you secure. Police does it. Governments does it. Everyone, including you yourself, are making efforts from morning to night to keep yourself secure. Right? Now tell me, has all crime finished as a result of this? In the real world, everything is over. Every every all crime is finished. We are all safe, secure. No. In spite of everyone's best efforts, including you yourself, there are all types of crime, unfortunately. It happens. Now let us talk about virtual world. Who is responsible or who takes action to keep you secure in the virtual world? Let's talk about it for a minute. Just think about it. I always say cyber crime is a crime between an individual and his device. A crime between you and your device is called a cyber crime. Does any system, does any person come between you and your device to keep you secure? Think about it for a minute. Till then, I will give you one or two examples to illustrate what I want to say. Okay. Facebook. You might be doing it. Even I do it. Anyone can make an account on Facebook. Anyone can. I can make an account on Facebook of a 16-year-old girl. Can anyone stop me? Nobody can. Is there any authentication verification? As of today, no. So if I make a 16-year-old girl's profile and send any of you a friend request, what do you see in front of you on the screen? A 16-year-old girl's profile. And what is your instinct? Human instinct? Belief. You will see a 16-year-old girl. You will believe it's a 16-year-old girl. And by mistake, any one of you might press that button of accept. What I want to say is, who presses that button? You press it yourself. I don't come there to threaten or to um, uh, force you to press the button. You have done it yourself. Correct? Another another offense. It's called a, it's called a debit card fraud, right? You might have heard about it. Somebody calls you, takes you in a web of deceit, whatever, tries to fool you and takes personal information from you and many people give it. But who gives it? The victim himself or herself. Another offense, suppose I want to control your device. I have to send you a virus. If I send you a virus, a file, a, a video, audio, whatever, and write below it, this is a virus, please download. Will you download? You will not. So I will send you something which you will download. And along with it, you will download my virus. But then who presses the button? You press it. I don't. Neither do I come and uh, threaten you. So what I'm meaning to say is you yourself are giving the wrong information to the wrong person on phone. You yourself are downloading the wrong file. You yourself are accepting the wrong friend request. Then who's going to save you? Is there one person in the world who can sit with all these crores who use the virtual world 24-7 the whole day long and tell them to uh, uh, prevent them from doing these mistakes? There is not. Is there any system which can come between you and your device and prevent you from doing these mistakes? No, there is not. As of today, there is not, definitely. Yes, there are some technical supports you can say. You can put some antiviruses, some firewalls, or whatever you want. But let me tell you one thing, ladies and gentlemen. Technology is also as effective as a person who uses that technology. So that apart, still there is no technology which can prevent you from doing these mistakes. So when there is no person and there is no technology or system to prevent you from doing these mistakes and becoming a victim of cyber crime, then tell me who's going to secure you in cyberspace? Which system? Which person? Other than you? Nobody. So only you can secure yourself in cyberspace in the best manner and according to me in the only manner. That is why I say awareness is the key to cyber security. Only key. Now tell me, when will you secure yourself? effectively obviously when you know about it so knowing is important as i said if you know what i'm going to say listen again make it part of your system give an automatic response so even if you don't know know today some things which i tell you some new things will you will know if you don't know if you don't know again make it part of your system as i said so knowing is important ladies and gentlemen but knowing is not awareness knowing is knowledge information whatever knowing is not awareness knowing and doing that is awareness and that is where the problem comes because people know many things it's common sense as i told you but they don't do many things that's not awareness that is, uh, knowing is not awareness huh? so knowing and doing 
that is awareness so be aware know today even if you don't know know and if you know know again and then do something about it because this gap between knowing and doing is where all these emergencies all these accidents most of them and most of the crime occurs i have seen it i'm a police officer people know many things but don't do it you have to wear a helmet for your own security everyone knows it but they feel great by not wearing it knowing and doing the gap don't keep it so again and again i'm repeating the same thing but if you know it know it again make it part of your system give an automatic response see it's a different world full of criminals and crime and you can't even see them and make a different mind mindset and once you know everything then you do those things every time and you do it every time that's another keyword knowing doing and doing every time i always say security is a habit it's not a choice every time you go to the house you're going to lock it it's not that sometimes you lock it sometimes you don't lock it that's no security so even in cyber security know everything do it in the right way and do it every time so with that motto we'll start give me two seconds to enable my presentation and then we will uh, move forward I hope you can see my presentation, Ravi. If you have any problem any anywhere down the line, please tell me. Okay, yes, I will proceed. My uh, name of my uh, my mission, you can call it, or whatever my uh, initiative, it is called Black Ribbon Initiative. This is for cyber security awareness. I do a lot of uh, work in many fields. Uh, I, as I said before, I have different initiatives for them. It's just out of my own interest. I have done it and I love doing it. I, for narcotics, different for uh, wildlife conservation, a different thing for the, even cyber crime training. I have a different initiative. This is for the wild, uh, for the cyber crime awareness. We are together in this. I had four different uh, parts of it earlier when we, uh, this time was not here of COVID. I used to go all over the country when I had time to do seminars, workshops. So they were great fun and they were, you know, better contact the live contact is always a better contact reach not much reach is limited but now is the time of lockdown we are all at home fighting a pandemic so this is for webinar based and i've done so many of them in the last two three months i've mustered on 70 80 uh, because i have a little extra time uh, and i can do these kind of things so it is it is it is good uh, i was in namo app a few days back uh, uh, and you know how many people listen to that program one and a half lakh people 150,000, huge reach. So it is something very uh, effective in that matter. But yes, the live contact, which is always uh, the best contact, is not there. But anyway, so we are together in the Sampar Kabhyan. In this time of lockdown, I believe the cyber security, cyber crime is even a bigger threat. Because in the normal time of, uh, you know, uh, 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 traditional type of crime uh, is all going down because very less movement, very less interaction, trade, business industry, all is down slowly. We are locking, but still restrictions are there. Restrictions are a lot. So traditional crime uh, like theft and burglary and loot and uh, robbery and, uh, you know, rape, molestation, murder, they're all down and they're going down. But cyber crime is not going down. It's going up. Why? Because I call it a true stay-at-home crime, like all of us are staying at home to fight a pandemic. This is the crime tailor-made for stay at home. The person who becomes a victim of this crime has to go nowhere. He can sit at home or she can sit at home and become a victim. The person who commits the crime can also do it by sitting at home. He, she has to go nowhere. So it is a true stay-at-home crime. It's even a bigger threat. So let's talk about it in detail. Uh, today we are together talking about uh, the lockdown era crime. Let us uh, proceed. First, I would like to introduce you to two, three concepts. It's very important. I don't doubt anybody's intelligence. You might be knowing everything, what I'm going to say, as I said. But then there is important to understand what is cyber world, uh, virtual world, digital world, cyberspace, same name. Uh, names are different. The, the concept is the same. There's no difference between cyber world and digital world and virtual world. If I ask you the definition, you might not be able to give it to me. Uh, even I don't know one. It is something maybe very long, which has no meaning. So let us first find out what we do in this world. Once you've identified the use of the cyberspace, taken together, that is the virtual world. Knowing about the virtual world, I, while I'm introducing the uses, um, I'll also try to put in some important concepts that you, you should know. But another important thing is once you know the world, then only you can understand the security of the world, this world in a better manner. So according to me, there are five main uses of the cyber world, five. Uh, they may be small ones, many of them, but once you group them, there are five. So let us proceed. The first biggest use of cyber world is information. 
biggest source of information and the biggest use of the virtual world is uh, information, suchna, which is the age that we are all living in. The age we are living in is called the information age. There was an information revolution which occurred in the uh, 90s and maybe the early 2000. Now that revolution is over, we are all living in the age of information. So when the name of the age is information age, the biggest uh, thing, the most important thing in today's age is information for me, for you, for everyone. The more information you keep, the more smartly you use it, you can be that much more successful. You can be that much more secure. You can be that much more uh, happy. Everything, everything comes from information. That is the base of everything in today's age. I'm here with you, with you today and addressing you on cybersecurity, not because I'm a very senior police officer and I can come here and say things which are of no sense and you will keep listening. You are here listening to me because I have more information in this field than you do. It's for your benefit that you are listening. If any one of you has more information than me, I should listen. I cannot say that, oh my God, I've got so much experience and I'm such a senior officer. What will you tell me? If I have this kind of attitude, I am going to harm my own self. So age of information, information is the biggest thing. He was an American writer. In fact, he was not a writer. He was an economist. His name was uh, Alvin Toffler. Uh, in the late 70s, early 80s, means 40 years back, he had got the Nobel Prize for economics. He had written a book called The Future Shock. In that book, he had coined a phrase, and that phrase said, information is power. Imagine 40 years back that that gentleman had prophesied that information is power. People must be laughing at him then. Then what is he talking? There is, there is money power, there is muscle power, there is energy power, but what information power, what is he talking? But today what that person said has come true. Today, information is the biggest power for you, for me, for everyone. Now, if for you, for me, for everyone, information is the biggest power, then please tell me which is the biggest power for a criminal of today's age. That is a cyber criminal. It is also information. And whose information? Your information. The more information about you reaches the wrong hands, that is a cyber criminal, the more successfully that person can commit a cyber crime on you. Very simple, right? I'll just give you an example. My example, just to illustrate the point, uh, how it goes. It's just an estimate. It's no research. Just estimates, okay? See, my name, Varun Kapoor, my job, Indian Police Service, name and job, two bits of information. If it reaches the wrong hand, maybe the person may be able to commit cybercrime on me, 5% uh, success rate. Now he comes to know my phone number on top of it. Third bit of information, right? Uh, very big information, actually, uh, phone number. It is the carrier of a lot of cybercrime. Now, if he comes to know my phone number, his success rate might become 15%. Now, on top of it, he comes to know that I'm a, I'm a cybersecurity expert. At least I think I am. Now, um, fourth bit of information, his success rate might become 25%. On top of it, he comes to know my hobby is wildlife photography. Fifth bit of information, his success rate will become even higher. That's how it goes. Uh, the more information uh, which goes uh, to the wrong hands, the more successfully cybercrime is committed on you and me right now you tell me one thing this information which goes to the wrong hand which becomes basis of cyber crime on you is given by whom just think about for a minute you got it it's you yourself you're not the only source but you're the biggest source the most of the information which which goes to the hands of the cyber criminal which ultimately becomes the source of cyber crime on us is given by us ourselves the whole day we leak information 24 hours without even thinking about it. We keep talking anything on the phone. We keep posting, sharing, forwarding, liking any type of content. We don't even think about it. And when this information, as I told you, reaches the wrong hands, it becomes the basis of cybercrime on you. Now, having said that, tell me, if you are the basic source of information, which is basic cause of our crime on you, then who can save that information for you? There's nobody but you. I told you, it's, a, it is a, it's all a game between you and your device. You are leaking the information 24-7, then nobody can uh, secure you in a better manner than you yourself. So I say information security is a basis of cyber security. Like awareness is the key to cyber security. Without being aware, you cannot be secure. Without securing your information, you cannot ensure your security. And as I told you, nobody is going to come to secure the information for you except you yourself. And if that is the case, then please start doing it from today. If I tell you today, stop doing Facebook, stop doing uh, WhatsApp. If you stop it, then very good, because the points of leakage will stop. But will you follow that kind of advice? Obviously not. So I'm not going to give this kind of security advice. That's no security advice. I'm going to tell you, do it, but do it carefully. 
what you're sharing, when you're sharing, with whom you're sharing, how much you're sharing, that you must start thinking. And then once you start thinking, then I'm sure you are going to start doing something about it. So secure your information and start it from today because nobody else is going to do it for you except you yourself. Because if that information reaches the wrong hand, it's going to be the basis of horrendous cybercrime on you. Okay. Now that's the first thing. Second thing, just before I proceed, it's written here, two trillion searches on Google every year. Now just take an analogy. What is this age? Information age. What is the biggest power? Information. Which is the biggest source of information today? Google. So which is the biggest power today? Google. A is equal to B, B is equal to C, so A is equal to C. Simple mathematical formula, we learned it when we were kids, correct? So if that is the case, that is why these information-based companies, be it Google, Facebook, WhatsApp, or whatever, what have you, are the biggest uh, corporations of today's age. Which is the biggest corporation today? Google Alphabet. Why are they so, so big? Billions of dollars is their worth. Why? You must be knowing it, but tell me why. They don't make a needle. Do they produce anything? Nothing. Not even a needle. Do they charge you even a penny? They don't. Do they even show you an advertisement? They don't. When people say advertisement is the main source of revenue, WhatsApp has no advertisement which they show to their clients. What is the value of WhatsApp? I don't know today's worth, but when it was uh, bought by Facebook four years back, it was 19.2 billion US dollars, nearly one and a half lakh crore rupees. A company worth one and a half lakh crore rupees doesn't make a needle, doesn't charge a penny, doesn't show an ad. Where do they own their money? Where do they earn their money from? Must be getting it from somewhere if they don't get it from you. Classical marketing model. Have you heard about it? What does that say? I produce a goods or a service, then I sell it. A part of it is my cost, part of it is my profit. That's how classical marketing model works. But this is not classical marketing. They don't charge you. You are the customer and the consumer. You give nothing, not even a penny. But still, they're worth billions of dollars, right? That's an alternate marketing. That means somebody else pays for it. And how, why do they pay for it? You know it. They buy your information. So these big giants of information, um, tech, uh, information world, uh, information-based companies, sell the information that you give them 24-7 without even thinking about it and earn billions of dollars. They're not doing a crime by selling information. I'm not saying that. You give them the authority to sell your information when you, when you digitally sign it and say, I agree, right? You know it. You say, I agree. That means you have made a digitally signed that contract to which terms of service you never read and you give them the authority to sell your information. Tell me one thing. If I get an affidavit to you in the real world, huh, a printed one, and say, sign this, will you sign it without reading it? Never. You may sign, you may word, you read every word 10 times before you sign it. Because you can see some threat and some something may go wrong. But in that world, you'll never see any threat. It's all fun and games. So even without reading the terms of service, you say, I agree. And you uh, uh, give them the authority to sell your information. So they are not doing a crime selling your information and earning billions of dollars. I'm not even saying they're selling your information to any criminal. I'm not even saying that. But they are selling your information and earning billions. Suppose that information goes around and reaches the wrong hand. Then it becomes the basis of cybercrime on you. Very simple. So your information is so expensive that some people are selling it and earning billions of dollars. And your information is so dangerous that if it reaches the wrong hand, it's going to be the basis of horrendous cyber crime on you. And nobody can save the information for you but you. So start doing it from today. Okay, that's what I mean. Now, next use of cyberspace is commercial activity. You know it very well. Online banking, online shopping, transactions, uh, payments and transfers and bookings, whatever. Big source, big use of cyber world. The third uh, use of cyber world also, you know, it is uh, communication, um, emails, phone calls, SMSs, communication contact, big uh, use of cyber world. Fourth is social networking, making a network. This also, you know, I'll just stop here for two minutes and try to explain to you the difference between communication and social networking. People are not realizing it. And, you know, see, cyberspace has a double edged problem. Virtual, in real world, you make a mistake, you might become a victim of a crime. But in a cyber space, if you make a mistake, you might become a victim of a crime. But on the other hand, you might become an offender by mistake also. So you must uh, be very careful. Um, one of the main reasons why people are becoming offenders by mistake is because they're not understanding the difference between communication and social networking. Please try to understand it and then try to do responsible social networking behavior. Uh, Communities all over the world, not only in India, are being torn apart by irresponsible social networking behavior of citizens. Please avoid it so that, as I said, firstly, firstly, you don't become a criminal by mistake. That's what I'm trying to explain to you at present. See, uh, if you don't understand the difference between communication and social networking, you're making a mistake. 
Correct? A non basis of that, because you don't know the difference, you do something which is a mistake. So actually, you have made a mistake by mistake. Now, let me tell you, there is no law in any land, any country. There is no law. And there is no law keeper anywhere in the world who will tell you that if you have made a mistake by mistake and broken the law of the land, you can say sorry and go. Don't make it again. That's not true. If you make a mistake by mistake, it is still a mistake and you will be punished for it. So what is the best way then? Not to make the mistake. And when you uh, when do when do you not make the mistake? You don't don't make the mistake when um, uh, you are uh, one minute. This is all gone. Uh, you you are not making the uh, your uh, you won't make the mistake when you understand that if either you know the law of the country. Okay. So if you know the law of the country, you will not make the mistake. The law of the land for cyber crime is called Information Technology Act. If you know what is written in that act, you won't make a mistake. Good. If you know the law, I believe it. And that's that's my belief. If you are working in the field, you should know the law. You're a responsible citizen. But if you cannot know the law, which is a tough job sometimes, then you better understand this difference. Hmm? Then you will not make the mistake. So let me try to make you understand, uh, at least explain you the difference. Let's see if I succeed. Communication and social networking may have a lot of differences. But the main difference which we have to talk about is this. Communication is with those people you know or those people you want to communicate with. Social networking, on the other hand, can be with anyone in this globe, potentially, who has access to internet. You may not know the person and you may not even want to contact the person. But still, you may be in touch with that person. That is the difference. And that is what creates the problem. Because you don't know the person and you never wanted to contact him or her either. See, communication, suppose I'm doing against some person, against some institution, some religion, some caste, suppose, Communication. I'm giving an email to the some person. I'm talking on phone and saying the same thing. Or I'm collecting 10 people around me and talking these things. First of all, I might know these people. Secondly, I might want to tell them these things anyway. And so when they're like me and they're, I know them and I want to tell them these things, they may be like me and they might say, yes, yes, you are saying the right thing. But if the same thing I put on the social networking sphere, then uh, it may go around to a person who does not agree with me and say, no, Mr. Kapoor, what you said, I don't agree. And suppose that person reports, and what I have done is against the uh, law of the land, then obviously I'll be uh, liable to be punished for it. That is the difference. So please understand, communication and social networking is not the same thing. And if you are, uh, uh, if you are not realizing it, you're going to make a big mistake, right? So please be responsible when you're doing social networking. I'll give you an example. I'll give you in case you'll understand everything. There's a place called Khandwa in Madhya Pradesh, right? In Khandwa, there was a person who thought he was very smart. Some people think they are very smart, you know. Uh, but they, they will not listen. They will not. They will be talking somewhere else. And, they, you know, they think they know everything. Uh, this guy thought he knew everything. And probably uh, he didn't realize the difference. Probably he was being too overactive, being an activist or whatever. He wrote against some religion uh, in Facebook, posted some content, right? Now, uh, that resulted in um, people being uh, killed in Khandwa. There were riots. There was a curfew for 15 days. There was a lot of problem. And uh, we wrote to Facebook to find out what was the IP address uh, from which this post was generated. Hmm? This guy, as I told you, he might have thought he's, he's super, <laughs> he's very intelligent. He knows everything. You know, people are in that uh, feeling. They are, they are of various sections. They feel they, they know everything. But unfortunately, they don't. So uh, this uh, guy thought he knew a lot and uh, Facebook wrote back to us and said that our server has not been used for this purpose. Proxy server has been used, you know. So proxies are generally shady. That proxy was from Slovakia, which is in Europe. I wrote to that proxy, gave all the details and uh, contacted them. They gave me the IP address. IP address is called Digital Footprints. I will tell you ahead uh, what uh, about them. So we got that person. That person was from Khandwa itself. And as I said, he might have thought he's too great. He might not be ever caught. And he might have just done it for fun or just to show his great activism. Now, that guy was caught. He was tried. You know how long he was punished for? He was punished for life imprisonment because he did not even know the law. There is a law called 66F in the IT Act. It's called cyber terrorism. If you do any activity in the virtual world which creates panic, which creates terror in society, then you're liable for cyber terrorism. And that chap was tried. And he was punished for what? Life imprisonment. Now tell me one thing. Before, if he had done, if he knew all these things, if he knew the law, if he thought he would be caught first of all. I see my light has gone here. I hope you can see me, but presentation you can see. But if that guy 
knew that he would be caught first of all and secondly if he would be caught he would be punished for life then do you think he would have done that i doubt it so please be careful and uh, realize this difference and um, uh, then do responsible social networking behavior then you will be safer that's what i would like to say and not become a criminal or a offender by mistake one more thing i would like to add before i move forward i used the word liking sharing and forwarding why should liking sharing and forwarding make you part of the crime right because it's not your content it is someone else else's content that you're liking sharing or forwarding but still you can become a criminal okay i would like to tell you this there is a key word in the it act and those who don't know it should know it that key word says transmission in the virtual world if you transmit anything which is obscene you know even words are obscene people are very uh, they they uh, circulate all sorts of non veg jokes and all that in the in the garb of uh, uh, fun and uh, you know laughter but that is also obscenity but anyway so if you transmit anything which is obscene if you transmit anything which is illegal maybe against a person institution uh, against some um, organization against some religion if you are transmitting anything or if uh, which is illegal obscene or whatever against the law of the land then you are doing a crime now what is transmission transmission is definitely uh, posting something yeah uh, or uploading something that is transmission posting something is also transmission you might host a website and put some illegal content in it that's also transmission so hosting and posting is transmission but liking sharing and forwarding is also transmission because you transmit it further suppose i host uh, post some content which is illegal and you like it now you have transmitted further it to your friends so you also become part of the crime because that original content by me was a was illegal so you cannot say it is not my content it is written by someone it is posted by someone else or someone else's video i just shared it or forwarded it you can't say that if you have shared it or forwarded it you have transmitted it further so that's what i'm to say it's not only the hosting and posting which is important the trans uh, the uh, uh, your content but liking sharing and forwarding should also be done carefully otherwise you might get into trouble the last is entertainment entertainment is games and movies and um, uh, songs and whatever it's a very big source of entertainment manoranjan all these five things if you're doing but with a gadget you do this in the real world also if you use a device and you're doing this then you're doing you're spending your time in the virtual world now i'd like to say one thing how much time just quickly i did a research 3 years back this is a research it's not not an estimate i have not seen this kind of research by any of the great um, thinkers in this field so i will share this data with you it's 3 years old it must it must be uh, very different now because it's a exponentially changing world so but still i will tell you this figure so that you have an idea what we are which direction we are heading 3 years back i did a research of high school students 10th 11th 12th and college students how much time they are spending in the virtual world okay and in 3 years back the figures i will share with you and uh, just wait a second 3 years back the figures i got i will tell you and um, Uh, they might have changed a lot but at least you'll get an idea 3 years back i found that high school students 10th 11th 12th spend 22% of one day's time in the virtual space that was the research finding and college students 29.8% that is nearly 30% 30% of your time our time we are spending in the virtual world 3 years back today this time might have become 50% i will have no doubt so half our lives we are spending in the virtual world and uh, maybe it will become more unfortunately so half your life you're spending in the virtual world what are you doing about security are you understanding the difference between communication and social networking are you securing your information yourself are you having a different mindset while you go into the virtual world just think about it it's high time that you start doing something about it cyber crime uh, this slide i will not get into the definitions i just want to tell you one thing which is very important if you ever think cyber crime is only internet uh, uh what uh, mobile phone uh, computer laptop if you think this then think again it's not only it is also most of the cyber crime is occurring uh, through the internet through a mobile phone through a uh, computer or laptop whatever but not all cyber crime can be committed on you through any device which can be programmed electronic device if i start asking you what electronic devices most of you will not be able to answer but let me tell you any device which can be programmed is an electronic device okay so electronic device can be used to commit cyber crime on you last year a case was registered in cyber cell bhopal in which a dealer of a whirlpool company whirlpool company makes washing machines so that person used to commit a crime on his clients 
when you used to sell them a washing machine because a washing machine is an electric electronic device it can be programmed so most of the devices you use today maybe a ac fridge um, car uh, air conditioner tv whatever they are all electronic devices and they all can be programmed so remember one thing uh, cyber crime is not only computer laptop uh, mobile and uh, internet it is any device which can be programmed electronic device so you have to be careful on that front also uh, digital footprints i would like to talk to you about last uh, concept then i will go into the crime which is occurring in the cyberspace in this covid time then we'll finish digital footprint you better know because uh, this is how we catch the criminals in the virtual world we means police and you must know what it is that because then you have to take care about them it's not that simple okay so let's talk about it in the real world which we live in there are many types of evidences but the ev best evidence is this what is this fingerprint what is a fingerprint a fingerprint is the ridges and valley pattern at the end of your fingertips this is the best evidence why you know it it's unique there is no other person in the world who has got a fingerprint like you or me so if our fingerprint is found anywhere we cannot say you are not there first because there is no second person who has fingerprints like us and secondly uh, there is no way in which the technology in which you can detach my fingers put my fingerprint somewhere and put it back in my hand there is no technology so i was there i have to explain what i was doing there this is the best evidence in the virtual in the real world now let's talk about virtual world in virtual world also there are a lot of evidences but the best evidence is a digital footprint what is a digital footprint if i ask you because you see not no interaction i would like to ask many people who think they know a lot but anyway digital footprint is data which you leave behind when you do any activity in the digital world correct that data is your digital footprint and that is also unique that's why it's so uh, it's such a good piece of evidence right now digital uh, what is a digital footprint unique to like this like a fingerprint is unique to a person a digital footprint is unique to a user that's the difference user of what a device because it's a device based world world and that data is from a device so it is unique to a device i might be having two phones then i will generate two digital footprints but both will be linked to me why because the sim is issued in my name so indirectly it is digit it is unique to the person so like a fingerprint is unique to a person a digital footprint is unique to a user and indirectly to the person so that's why it's such a strong piece of evidence but according to me it is even a stronger piece of evidence than fingerprint why suppose i wear a glove and i go anywhere do i leave behind my fingerprints no i can hide my fingerprints suppose i go somewhere and my fingerprints are left on a surface i take off my handkerchief and i wipe them do you think my fingerprints will remain no i can remove my fingerprints so i can hide remove change my fingerprints but my digital footprints i cannot hide i cannot change i cannot remove once they are made they are made right so they are new criminals i told you many people think they are very smart they come up with new technology uh, they come up with uh, proxy servers they sometimes they come up with the dark net sometimes they come up with tor browser you know new new kind of technology to do what to mask or cover your footprints you remove one by one the layer you will reach the original footprint because they cannot be hidden they cannot be removed and they cannot be changed so that's what i would suggest to you make your digital footprints as good as possible we are all normal users hmm? none of us is some some big criminal or some cyber uh, um, uh, offender are we we are not so make your digital footprints as good as possible so that you do not get into trouble any time as i told you in uh, mistake by mistake i can give you hundreds of examples when common citizens well thinking people over smart some of them have done mistakes and gone to jail and punished I told you life imprisonment so be careful make your digital footprints as good as possible you don't get caught i'll give you an example to illustrate it even further dark net dark net is 75% of internet activity dark net they say mm, new protocols browsers are very tough you can never track think again there they you know there's a tor browser the onion router and all that kind of thing and they think that it cannot be traced but please there was a site called silk route you might have heard about it Silk Route was a very infamous site in the dark net. You could go onto the site using the new, new browsers and protocols or whatever. You could order anything illegal, like um, uh, drugs, like uh, uh, weapons, like uh, wildlife parts or whatever. And they you pay in bitcoins, which again they feel there is no trace, no trail, uh, and then that would be delivered to your doorstep. And people thought, my God, they can never be stopped. You, I'll tell you, Europol, you know, uh, European Police uh, Organization. They teamed up with FBI of America, and I'll tell you, it take, took them less than ten days 
to uh, uncover that uh, digital footprints. They got the entire gang of the rascals, those criminals, and they, they even got the leader. He was from United Kingdoms. Now he has been sentenced to life for all the crimes he has done. So uh, if uh, these criminals think that they can get away with this, it's very tough. You know, it can be, it's not that easy. So for us, our motto should be to make our digital footprints as good as possible so that we don't get into trouble. See, if you ever feel, you know, everything is between you and your device, you think there's great privacy. I can keep talking to anyone. I can keep liking any content. I can keep visiting any site. I can keep doing anything that nobody will know. But let me tell you one thing. There's a thing called surveillance, Nigrani. If in the real world, I start surveilling any one of you, maybe I can get to know 30, 40% of what you do. But suppose I start doing surveillance in the electronic world, in the, in the, in the virtual world, I will know 80, 90% of what you are up to. So be very careful. Don't think it's all private and it's all fun and games. It is not. Be careful. Uh, make your digital footprints as good as possible. Now I'll talk about the crime. Crime, uh, cyber crime is uh, a lot of cyber crimes are occurring. I'm not going to talk about all of them. I don't have the time. Uh, but I will deal with some uh, three important groups of uh, cyber problems which are occurring in this lockdown times. That's what we are here for. Uh, please listen to them carefully. Uh, they are important and uh, they can be of great uh, harm to you if you don't understand them. And they can be of great benefit to you if you understand what I'm trying to say. So I have identified three groups of cyber problems, cyber security problems, which are occurring to citizens during then we finish. You must have heard about the word phishing. Phishing to you may be seeming something, uh, you know, very small. Phishing. That's not phishing. Phishing is the base of most of this crime occurring in cyberspace. Be it financial crime, be it bullying, be it stalking, be it child pornography, be it um, uh, pedophilia, any type of crime, the base, the start, the, the, the foundation is phishing. It's such a, I call it an insidious crime. Insidious means something which seems very small, but it is very, very bad. It's not that small. If you think phishing is just some kind of financial frauding, you are wrong. Please think again. So uh, if you understand what phishing is, and once you uh, uh, know the ways of securing yourself from phishing, I think you'll be able to secure yourself from a very large section of crime which is occurring in cyberspace. Okay, so I will tell you what phishing is. Actually, you know, I've heard a lot of cyber experts. There are some people who think uh, you know, they're big names. I don't want to take names, uh, but uh, knowledge is very less. So I've heard a lot of cyber experts. They come and talk all big things. They'll say artificial intelligence. They will come with cyber war, blockchain technology, uh, big data analytics and metadata. And they'll say all sorts of things. And you kind, the audience who's listening is all very happy. And when the person finishes, and goes, they feel like, yaar, isko, he, bahut pata tha, yaar. his knowledge is a lot. But what did we learn? Nothing. What do we remember? Nothing. Your take home, to your take away, nothing. I don't do that. I talk in very natural, normal terms, which everyone can understand. A person who has no idea of cyber crime, cyber security, will also be able to understand what I'm trying to say. So I'm going to talk in that language, and I am talking in that language. I'm not talking in that big, uh, great expert, so-called language, which nobody can understand but that damn expert himself. So I am going to talk to you in very simple terms. Please try to listen to this. Phishing is a very dangerous crime. I will try to tell you everything, what phishing is, why it is such a danger, how it is done, and how to secure yourself. If you understand and if you really um, uh, know what I'm trying to tell you, and you understand and secure yourself from phishing, I have full belief that you can be safe from a large section of cyber crime which is occurring in cyberspace. Okay, let's start. Phishing comes from the English word phishing with an F. What is phishing? Phishing is catching a fish. The fisherman goes to the, uh, to the lake or the sea or this river and throws a line and waits. Thousands of fish passes from there. Everyone doesn't get caught. One gets caught. The fisherman's work is done. He never wanted to catch all the thousand anyway. That's fishing. You remove, remove the F and add the PH. It becomes fishing. It becomes a cyber crime. It, 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 the concept is the same, but the effect is not the same. You uh, make one SMS and send it to thousands of people. You make one uh, email and send it to thousands of people. You make one phone call and do it to thousands of people. Then wait. Everyone doesn't get caught. Some do. The work of the criminal is done. That's how it works. But it is the effect is not that simple. 
It's not just like catching a fish. It is, it is like trapping a person and spoiling his entire life. It is not only money. It is reputation. It is your whole future. Anyway, so the concept is the same, but the effect is not the same. I like to talk to you. Uh, you know, real world crime fishing, if you talk, it is cheating. Dhoka dhari. Cheating someone. What does the cheat do? He goes to the victim, tries to uh, entice him, tries to trap him, tries to um, uh, give him all sorts of uh, uh, wrong uh, ideas and then tries to uh, uh, achieve his objective. Right? One at a time. Takes so much time to um, trap someone. So much effort. So much time. Just for one person. Then he might succeed. He might not succeed. If he doesn't succeed, then he starts all over again with someone else. So as I said, so much time, so much effort. And uh, victim, just one. He might get caught, so much danger, he'll get thrashed on the scene, he might go to jail. So much danger, so much time, so much effort, and only one at a time. This is cheating. Now if you add technology to it, it becomes fishing. And it becomes even more, and much, much more dangerous. Technology, I would like to tell you one thing. Technology has made our lives very simple. Technology has improved our lives a great deal. Sit anywhere, call anyone. Sit anywhere, book any ticket. Sit anywhere, transfer any money. So simple. When I was in college, uh, uh, this mobile phone was science fiction. Do you think it is science fiction anymore? Even uh, Thelawala has it. You know, a child of sixth grade uh, uses a mobile phone with uh, aplomb. Just imagine, no longer any fiction. Technology, that has improved our lives and that has empowered our lives. Hasn't it? It has. Now, the excess of technology cannot be denied to anyone. The excess you have, criminal has equal access to technology. So your life has been empowered and improved by technology. A criminal's life has also been empowered and improved by technology. You cannot deny that. Their life has been improved and their work has been empowered. So sitting at home, a criminal just needs a, 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 a maybe a laptop or a computer and a connection and he can keep attacking thousands of people at the same time and then wait, he will get some victims. No effort, no time, wastage, and he can attack thousands. That's technology. That's why I've seen people from very good houses, from good families, doctor, medical colleges, engineering colleges, getting involved in cybercrime because they think it's so profitable, because there is no problem. You, there's no danger. You will not get caught, at least not on the scene of crime. You might get caught later, but not on the scene of crime. Right? So no danger, no effort no uh, waste of time and you can attack thousands together technology has empowered uh, cheating and made it fishing and made it so much more dangerous to you so better understand about it before proceeding further i will just tell you some scales then i will go forward just it's not such a small thing see there's a phishing kit available in the black market which can send a phishing email to five lakh random email ids what is a phishing email phishing email will either show you some scare or give you some inducement to do what to do what is written in that phishing email right that's what a phishing email is, some scare or some inducement to make you do something wrong, right? A phishing email. So there is a phishing kit available in the black market to send a phishing email to five lakh random email IDs. It costs $65, just remember this figure. Now, Cisco is the American company which did a research uh, to find out what is the success rate in phishing email attack. They found that if 10 lakh phishing emails are sent. That means 1 million phishing emails are sent. How many people get trapped? Eight. Eight out of a million. You might feel, oh God, this is no real success. Oh, only eight. Listen further. Each of the eight people who get trapped, how much money do they lose? $2,000. Now you know the figures. Now let's just see the scales. So a criminal who needs to send 10 lakh phishing emails to needs two phishing kits. What's his cost? What's his cost that he's going to invest? $130. Two fishing kits, right? He goes nowhere, does nothing, just a computer and a connection and $130. He sends phishing emails to 10 black uh, IDs. How many people get trapped? Eight. Each loses $2,000. What is his return? $16,000. What was his uh, cost? $130. What is his percentage profit? 12,000%. Is it a good business? A very good business. What is the problem? It is illegal. So that's why see the see the profit scales, see the anonymity, see everything, see the technology. That's why it is such a big danger. You better become aware about it. It's not only the financial part. It is many other things which are the basis. I told you. I have identified some ways it is done. Please listen carefully. This is the financial part of it, but it can also be used for other type of crime, the social crimes. So be, uh, just listen how it is done. First, first of all, phishing to send a uh, uh, virus to your uh, device. That is one way that phishing is done. 
I told you before, if I send a virus, if I send a file to you and say it's a virus downloaded, you will not. You will download something which you with which you will download my virus. One way to do it is through a phishing attack uh, and an email. Suppose I send you an email. What did I say? A phishing email is either a scare or an inducement to make you do something which is contained in that email, which is wrong, right? Now a phishing email I send you to scare you or to induce you. What do I want you to do? To press that red box. Now what is that? That is a file which you have to download. That is an audio file. That might be a video file, document, photograph. The size of that file is determined by the size of the virus I want to send you because that virus is embedded in the file. You will only see that file. You will not see the virus that I'm sending you. Technological empowerment. Now being induced or scared, you might just press that button because you don't care also because you don't see the danger you see it's all fun and games now you just press that button that video file will download audio file will download in your device and so will my virus which you will never see both of them will get installed you might listen to that um, audio file you might delete it it's up to you but my virus will not be deleted it's it's programmed to be downloaded with the file but not deleted with the file once it's, it's in place it can be of any type backdoor root kit root kit trojan uh, adware spyware whatever i want from you now, from today, whatever uh, you talk, I might listen. Whatever you type, I might see. Whatever site you visit, I might know. So the device is in your hand, but the control is in my hand. Now I can steal all your information and clean up your account. I can attack your reputation, blackmail you. I can get your secrets and blackmail you and uh, dis defame you. And your whole reputation is gone. I might just steal your company secrets, your source codes, your company is gone. So. Uh, this is one way of injecting virus to your device through a phishing attack. It can also be done through SMS link very easily. You can see here, important upgrade on your mobile account, failure to comply might lead to suspension, small scare. What do you have to do? You press that link and prevent your mobile account from being suspended. Small thing, no danger. You cannot see anything. Very good. Just press the link. One, uh, one file will download in your device. Along with it, will download my virus and do whatever that uh, email virus did. It can also be uh, done through a malware-laden post. Again, the information you provide me becomes basis of cybercrime on you. Suppose I come to know that you're a member of this group, uh, whatever it is called, and uh, I know your phone number, all of yours. I'm the best, happiest cyber criminal. I'll make one video file and uh, entitle it uh, uh, corruption going on in whatever group this is, uh, uh, or uh, some sex scandal in this group, or whatever I want you to um, uh, excite your uh, curiosity, another human instinct, curiosity. Suppose I make this kind of video and send all of you, because I know your phone number, I know that you are members of this group, and I know most of you will be using WhatsApp on this number. Once you get such a file, do you think you will see it? Of course you will. 99, 100% will see it. Curiosity, instinct. You can't change instincts. You'll just see it just to see what it is, even if you don't believe it. You see it, you might delete it. Again, my virus is in place. It will do what it has to do what I wanted it to do anyway. This is one way. Virus injection through phishing. The other virus attack, the phishing attack is to take you to a fake site. This is generally done for uh, financial sites like banking sites and um, uh, insurance sites or stock working sites. They will do a phishing attack and take you to a fake site. Think You think it's the original site, but it is not. It's a very long thing. I will not get into it. I don't have time. But uh, I'll just tell you this, that they will send you a phishing email. See, what does it say? Federal Trade Commission. Federal Trade Commission is an American body. All traders are members of this commission. You know, so uh, you have to tell me that you're a trader. You will tell me that. You know? I told you, you know, we keep leaking information 24-7 without even thinking. Who, what's going to, wrong, uh, going to go wrong if I say that I'm a trader? But it is going to go wrong because I know then you're really registered with the Federal Trade Commission. And this kind of attack may work. Suppose you're not a trader, then this type of attack is not going to work. So I'll send you an email. What does it say? FTC refund. Refund means money coming. Who doesn't mind money coming? We don't even realize whether we applied for the refund or we are eligible for that refund. Money coming? No, no problem. Suppose it said FTC, fine. You would have thought 100 times. What fine? Why fine? How fine? Refund? Paisa aara hai? Koi problem nahi. Aane do. Kya hota hai? Nahi bhi hamare ko uske eligibility hai. Nahi bhi hamne apply kiya to kya wo aara hai? You know, temptation. This is, this is called greed. This is another human instinct. So they will do things like that and they will send you this kind of an email. What do they want you to do? Actually, it's a long story. I'm not going to get into the details, which I think you may understand. They want you to click that link, which is there, ftc.gov. Now you will click that link because you think money is coming to you. You will reach a site, which is a fake site because it is hyperlinking. Actually, this is another site which opens, but you think it's a ftc.gov site. It will look just like, look like FTC site. It will have the same layout, same color, same design, same uh, 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 the logos, everything will be the same, but it will not be the same site. The URL at top will be different, but nobody sees the URL again. Another security measure. Suppose you go to Facebook. Do you every time check their URL? It looks like Facebook. It must be Facebook. Human instinct. What you, you see, what you believe. 
but you must see the, the, the URLs. So you will go to the uh, a fake site thinking it's the actual site because you have pressed the wrong link. And um, once you go there, you'll put all your uh, personal information there and that information will go to that uh, cyber criminal. They will clean up your account. So this is the second way. In that first, uh, it can also be done, of course, through an SMS. Uh, what is this? Your credit card has been temporarily suspended to unlock your account. Uh, it's a small thing. It's a small scare, but it's a scare. What do you have to do to unlock your amount? Go to that Canada Trust. Canada Trust is a bank. Click that uh, site. Fake site will open. You will put all your details. You think you have prevented your card from being temporarily suspended, but actually you have given your information on the wrong site. So these two attacks, phishing attack to put a virus in your device, phishing attack to take you to a fake site, they will get your information and then they will transfer your money. They cannot get cash. They will transfer your money from your account to a uh, online wallet, wallet or and get a uh, purchase a service uh, like a uh, recharge your phone, a book a ticket or whatever, or they will transfer your money to a online shopping site and do some buy some goods. So they cannot get cash, they will transfer your money uh, to buy a goods or service. But there's a third attack in which they will get cash because you will give it to them and put it by in their fake account and they will get money. And that I call phishing by temptation. They will find out about you all the information that you put out yourself and then they will engineer that information it's called social engineering this is another another type of cyber crime all the information put out by mostly by you by the other sources also but they will collect all of that engineer all of that then attack with you with all of that and then some people get trapped because they are they don't realize they don't see the uh, the danger they think everything is good hunky dory but it's not so uh, social engineering is type of cyber crime. See, and a building is also made up of cement and bricks and iron and all that. But if you keep it on the ground, that the building doesn't come up. You have to engineer the building. Similarly, information is lying around all over. Most of it is given by you yourself because we never think, we never secure our information. And then they collect all that information, make, an, make a building, make an uh, imarat, and then they attack you with that. And please, if you think that this kind of attack only works with people who are a little un unaware, or people who are a little uneducated, and they will only fall for this, not me, please think again. I have been to ISRO, I have been to DRDO. People have skill and knowledge to send rockets to the moon, but they do not have enough sense to protect and prevent their own information and secure their own device. So think again, the more active you are, the more smart you are, the more uh, you're displaying your great uh, uh, abilities, the more liable you are to such an attack. I get emails quite a lot saying that we are this, some organization from US, they will give a link, please check this link, see who we are. We want to invite you for an award. First of all, if I click that link, I might uh, introduce a virus in my device. But secondly, if I click that link, a fake site might open. Anybody can make a site sitting at home, even a child can, and uh, put it online for 330 rupees. And the beautiful site will open, I'll feel, oh my God, and there's no better organization that, than that. Even Nobel organization of um, uh, Sweden is left behind. But uh, uh, this kind of beautiful organization will open. And if I start feeling, see, now my name has gone to US. They, they honor me. What about India? Forget it. Who cares? Once I start thinking like that, I'm gone. I was doing a webinar a few days back in Bhagalpur, Bihar. I came to know of a case. <laughs> There's an IES couple. Uh, they had returned from deportation to Delhi. IES, huh? they think they, they know everything. But this IES couple was attacked by this kind of attack on Facebook. And you know how much money they lost? 45 lakhs. Not 45 rupees, not 45,000 rupees, 45 lakh rupees. And they traced the uh, digital footprints. I told you, you can always find them out. But that person where that originated that attack from was from Nigeria. So the criminal is in Nigeria. The money they put was in Bank of England. Money in Bank England. The criminal in Nigeria. My uh, police station Thanedar is thinking where to Nigeria jaun, ki England jaun. Uh, He has to go nowhere. And there's another case. I keep doing these webinars all over the country. Yesterday I was doing for Maruti. Day before yesterday I've got so many calls from Maruti people who have undergone cyber crime of different types. Uh, so people do contact me and tell me their problems. So I know what's going on in the whole country. I was doing one for uh, Jharkhand uh, MIT University in uh, Rachi. A lady called me after that. She's a professor and uh, she was also trapped with this kind of attack. One and a half lakh rupees on Paytm she lost. She was smart. She collected six numbers. She gave it to Ranchi police. They caught the entire gang, but they didn't get the money because money gets spent. So you might not get the person and the money. You might get the person, but no money. So what is the best way? Don't get trapped in it. So this is the third type of attack. The force is wishing, you know it. Um, phishing by voice call is wishing. Uh, this is the most potent threat in today's lockdown time. A lot of calls come and people are threatened to and uh, scared or, uh, you know, uh, tempted to uh, part with their money. And they give all sorts of information. I've listed here, user name, account number, OTP, credit card number, name on card, expiry date, CVV. They give everything. 
They don't even think what they're doing. They just keep giving information without even realizing what they're doing. Even bank managers, can you imagine? There's a case in Indore in Central Bank of India, manager, he gave all the information and got frauded, defrauded. Imagine a police officer's house getting burgled. Everyone laughs because, oh my God, you can't protect yourself. What will you protect me? And what about this bank manager who knows it cannot be given? So, but he still gave. So it's not that easy. And don't think that anybody's immune to it unless until you are you are uh, aware. Jagru, alert, aware, awake. Fifth is smishing. Smishing is also same thing. Smishing is getting these uh, things like username, password through uh, SMS attack. So five types of phishing I've told you. Phishing to put a virus in your device. Phishing it to take you to a fake site. Phishing uh, by temptation. Phishing, smishing. Five. Now you know how it is done. But please uh, know how it can be prevented according to me, my formula. Please follow it. I think you will be able to save yourself from a large amount of cyber crime. There's two steps. First step is, I always say, in the virtual world, do not have any contact with the unknown. This is the basic uh, cyber crime prevention strategy against phishing in the virtual world, according to me. There's no other one. No contact means no contact, and no contact means every time no contact, not sometimes no contact. If you get a uh, friend request from unknown source, you don't have to accept it. Uh, unknown source email, you don't have to download any attachment. Unknown source SMS, don't have to click any link. Unknown source phone call, don't have to talk anything. So this is the first and the most important uh, security measures. In the virtual world, you don't have to have any contact with the unknown. Second. There's another way per, uh, part to it. This is not. This is the most important. There's another part uh, because of its technology empower, empowered crime. There are there are many problems that you will have to face. One problem that you have to face is spoofing. Spoofing is the word which means being something and showing something. I can call you from my own phone, and I can display some other number to you. You know it. It's called a internet call or a wipe call. This is called call spoofing. It is possible. I can give you an email from my ID and display some other email to you. It is called fake mailing or mail spoofing. So all this is po possible because of technology, unfortunately. Mail spoofing, call spoofing, profile spoofing, SMS spoofing, everything is possible. So as I said, two steps uh, you have to take to secure yourself from phishing. First, if it is unknown, then there is no contact, no question. Second, even if it appears known, it might be spoofed. So you have to verify. You can't just take it on face value that it looks right, so it must be right. This is the virtual world. This, anything can be shown to you. I have been saying it from the beginning. So verify. Verification means you have to make a little effort, but you must do it for your own security. Security requires effort. It is not uh, just uh, by chance. Uh, suppose you get a, uh, a, pro, a friend request from my profile. If you don't know me, reject. No question. First stage. If you know me, then there must be some other way that you can contact me other than Facebook. Make a phone call. Ask me. Have you given me a Facebook a friend request? If I say yes, you can decide. If I say no, it's reject. If you get a uh, SMS or a phone call from your bank asking for something or some detail, don't give anything that time. Cut the phone. Do whatever. Make an effort. Find out the name and number of your bank manager, the section of your bank phone. Find out whether you have given this kind of uh, um, email or a phone uh, call to me uh, through some other source. If they say yes, which they will not, then um, uh, you can decide what you want to do. But if they say no, then obviously it's finished. So there are two things. First is no contact with the unknown. Second is verification. Please do it and please do it every time. Don't neglect it. There the, the are two more groups of crime uh, or problems. I'll do it quickly. Five minutes, I'll finish. Uh, but the second uh, part I want to talk to you about is social media and the problems related to it. Social media, I'm not against social media. The big engine for change. Engine is the basis for development. I know it and you know it. Uh, the change which is happening in today's world is the basis of all the improvement and goodness which is coming in our lives. There are many other engines for it also. Uh, the gadgets, the technology, the internet, they're all there. But social media is also a very powerful tool for change which brings about goodness and happiness in our lives, no doubt. I am not against it, but anything which has bad also has things which is, anything which has good also has things which is bad. Our motto should be to accept the good and to avoid the bad. That's what I'm going to do. These are four things which I've identified. You must be knowing all of them. I, I, I'm sure of it, but I said, know it again, make it part of your system. It's not that easy. You Sometimes you just, just tips, make it part of your system. That's why I'm going to discuss these four things. First is overuse of social media should be avoided at all costs. You know it. Physical problems, mental problems, backaches, spondylosis, watery eyes, uh, conflicting relationships, suicides, depressions. What more can I say? There are so many results of overuse of social media. Please avoid it. Anything uh, which is done in excess, even if it is good, becomes bad. 
too much eating is also bad too much sleeping is also bad too much exercise is also bad so too much social media is also bad even if it is good otherwise so avoid overuse of social media at any cost second is social media has fake news content in it please realize it everything you see because we believe whatever you see could be dikha diya hame bhi leave ho gaya are aisa aur aisa ho gaya no everything fake there is research which shows that news content of social media not all content there are many contents on social media but news content which appears on social media 70% can be fake or false fake means it is uh, more than it is uh, shown more than what it is and false means obviously it is totally untrue so we are all uh, you know thinking human beings uh, how can you keep falling for all kind of fake and false news keep it in mind uh, 70% can be fake and false and then react suppose you want to see uh, social media news and move forward your choice do it but if you want to form an opinion on it or if you want to take some action reaction on it then please uh, verify it just don't fall for any news because they can show you content from some other country and they do it very often and people get all excited or oh, yes or oh, and then they will show you content from some other age 10 years back that content they will show as if it's happening today and uh, everyone will get very excited and then morphing is also possible you know it digital modification of photos and videos and um, uh, audios it is very easily possible they take photograph four photographs and morph it and make it one and people feel are oh, this has happened and then they start acting and reacting and making a mess and chaos of the whole situation i am a police officer please understand just click one click of a button that that content can go viral all over the place all over the colony all over the city all over the world in just clicking one button and then the situation becomes so explosive that it and it is based on a fake thing on a false thing just imagine then it is even worse i was a additional director general of police of indore zone this zone you know nine districts uh, a few months back one and 1.25 crore people live here one percent of this country's population a few months back a rumor fueled by or this uh, social media it was happening in many other places it happened here also child lifting bachcha chori there was such a big rumor such a big hue and cry i used to go to functions people used to tell me uh, young parents this was all before covid of course that um, uh, sir uh, should we send our children to school uh, why because their children are being stolen i said where tell me a case then i found out from my whole zone not even one case was there registered in these nine police uh, district nine districts which has 168 police stations 1.25 crore people live here and 100000 crime is uh, is uh, registered here every year there was not even one case in one the whole year but see the panic see the fear and the people were uh, became so panicked that any stranger talking to a child in some colony or some basti or some mohalla or some village they would start beating that person to death even just because of the panic so please understand be be rational be human that uh, uh, social media fake news is a problem and you will have to keep it in mind you have to verify before you take any action just make it a motto third is that social media because of this kind of fake news false news other reasons also it uh, creates panic and fear in the uh, minds of the people and as i said human beings are known for their rational behavior rational is socha samjha we do rational behavior when you come into panic and fear then you become irrational and that's what these kind of people want so prevent this irrational behavior verify what you are seeing and uh, um, uh, understanding on the social media then act then react then make an opinion i think you will be a true human otherwise it's not very uh, nice what i what i would say anyway the fourth is uh, misuse of social media you should avoid at all cost if you ever think yourself that you can misuse social media uh, then please think again don't do it because firstly if you are doing something which is against the law of the land which is illegal you will be caught and you will be punished that's the first part of it which i have told you in some cases of it already but please leave the legal part aside there is a moral and there is a ethical part of it also uh, legality one side if you do something illegal purposely and knowing and think that you will not get caught you will so leave that leave that legality aside there is a moral and an ethical part also uh, if you are doing things just to uh, spoil the system just to uh, spread terror and fear and all that then i i think you are going to damage uh, your community society more than that you're going to damage your country and the most damage you're going to do to yourself so if you if you are rational and if you are intelligent nobody wants to damage himself or herself 
to that extent. So biggest damage ultimately you'll be doing to yourself. So please use social media for good, for change, for betterment. Avoid overuse, avoid misuse, avoid this fake news which comes there and don't get into panic and fear as a result of all kind of content which is in circulation in the social media. That would be my recommendation. The last is group of uh, problems and then I'll finish is uh, the monitoring of children. This is very important, uh, which is even today. Children are a group, we are very, very vulnerable in the virtual world and I have seen it. There are uh, cyber criminals who do crime on all types of uh, yeah, general crime. Then they have tailor-made crime for children, for youth, for students, for housewives, for elderly, for businessmen, whatever. The maximum number of crime for children, unfortunately. And for children, I have a very big, uh, most, a lot of you can be, must be parents. Uh, so for you, it's even more important. For children, I have a belief that awareness is very important. No doubt about it. But along with awareness, they need monitoring. Awareness is not enough. You have to monitor your children. You have to monitor your next generation. In the real world, what is the biggest contribution you have for your next generation, for your children? One is provision. We provide them everything. Goes best, uh, as best as we can, of course. Best education, best environment, best security, whatever. Provision. Second, monitoring. What does your child do? When does he get up? When does she sleep? When, who does she meet? Where does he go out? How much does he study? What does he eat? All the time, we are monitoring the activities of our children. Children may like it or not, I'm not saying that. They may not like it. But that is part of a job as a parent, as a, as a teacher, as a professor, whatever. Monitoring, very important. Provision, very important. These two things combine to ensure that your children have the best future possible that you can provide them. Okay. Now the virtual world. I told you the virtual world, children along with us are spending 50% of their lives there. How much monitoring are you doing? Think about it. I don't think more than zero. Nothing. There are many reasons for it. I'm not going to get into that. But our monitoring of our children in the virtual world is almost negligent. And in that case, you are harming them and their future in a big manner. You must start monitoring. There are many ways of monitoring. I will. I cannot get into this now. But monitoring must be done. Start thinking, start doing. There are three types of problems I've identified here. There are many more. I'll just uh, talk about these and then I'll finish. Uh, one problem is online gaming. This is a very big problem which children are facing today. It's not a crime, but it's a problem. And if you see the word, it's online gaming. It is not online game. It is not a game. It is not killing anything. This is a business. This, this is a dhanda. And uh, when does the business run well? When somebody uses it more. And when you use it more, what happens? WHO, World Health Organization, has come out with a report which says that excessive online gaming is a mental disorder. It is not even um, uh, now uh, uh, addiction. It is beyond that. It is a disease. I don't think we, you know, we want that our children should be diseased. So monitor your children. First, fix the time. You have to fix time. It's a tough job, but you must fix the time as part of the monitoring of your children online. And second is monitor the content and fix content. Because some of these games are very violent, full of blood, gory bullets, dead bodies, uh, drugs, what have you. So you must monitor time, must monitor content. I was just reading a newspaper article. An 80-year-old uh, grandmother was murdered by her 13-year-old grandson because she did not give him $6 to play an online game. Correct? So monitor content and monitor time. Second is online bullying. I can speak a lot about it, but I don't want to at present. Some other time, maybe. Let us see. Bullying, very big problem. Bullying can spoil the child's future forever. Only bullying. Forget about online. Bullying, some other child does it to show uh, his power, uh, his, uh, you know, just for his entertainment on another child. I have very strong feelings against it. I have seen many cases like this. A child starts, stops eating, stops studying, stops going out, loses confidence, uh, depression, suicide. The whole future is spoiled and child will never tell. Parents have to find out. In the real world, we monitor and find out, but online we don't. So uh, bullying are very much against. It is done by another child, actually, on another, uh, another child or a youth. And such a child should be punished. According to me, if that child has to go to jail or to remand home, must go. You have no right to spoil somebody else's life for your own entertainment. And the authorities or the school and colleges who tolerate this should also go to jail. It's called abetment. Abetment to crime is also a crime, according to uh, uh, your information, if you don't know. So I have very strong feelings against it. And that's why you may feel uh, you're getting bada gusa or and all that. But it is because of that. I have seen many cases. Unfortunately, many people have, uh, many children lose their future and their lives. 
I can give you a case of IIM, just imagine. Anyway, online, if you add the cyber part, it becomes even more dangerous. Many, many times more potent and more harmful because it spreads faster, it has a wider audience, and it follows children home 24 hours. That's why the effect is even worse. And uh, I'll give you an example of an IIM girl. I am Indian Institute of Management is there in, in Indore. She was not even a child. She was a 24-year-old postgraduate student, bright girl, uh, gold medalist, bright future. Hmm? She started uh, having problems. Her parents must have been good. I really give them credit. They must have monitored her. They might have found out there's nothing wrong in the real world. There must be something online. And they got that child, that girl to me. I talked to her. She was being bullied online. Very bad obscene on uh, YouTube. She had lost all everything, stopped studying, whatever, all those things which I said. We tra tracked the footprints. I told you, nobody can, you cannot survive it. We caught the person. You know who, who it was? It was her best friend. She was another girl who was doing this. Anyway, the long story. Now the problem is solved. The girl is back on track. But I believe if it would have been later, more uh, one month more, maybe her future would have been destroyed. So online bullying, big problem. Please watch out for your children. Last is online grooming. Grooming means uh, getting ready. Getting ready for what? Getting ready for something wrong. Children have two characteristics which make them vulnerable to this crime. First is they're adventurous. Second, they're innocent. Adventurous, they will try everything. Second, innocent. Once they get trapped or once they, something goes wrong, then they don't know what to do. And then they keep getting trapped even more. So one way of doing it, I have seen many cases of this also. They will, um, uh, they are all middle-aged kind of people, criminals. They will first, as I said, engineer the girls, uh, the boys' information, which the girl, the, the child, you know, puts out herself or himself. Lots of information, all types of information. They will get a hold of that, identify their uh, target, and fix the target, and then attack. Make a fake profile. I told you, anybody can make a profile. They will make a profile in the age of that child and befriend the child. And because they are adventurous, they will befriend everyone, which I said, you should never contact an unknown person in the virtual world. Friend request means reject, but they don't, uh, even being aware, they do it because they are adventurous. You know, want to try everything new. Once they make friends, two, three months, normal talking, then that guy will come forward and tell some secret. Once a secret is told, the child is innocent. She will also, he will also tell the secret. That's it. Once secret is known, then the blackmail starts, then the bullying starts. So many things start. Oh, you did this. Now I'll tell your parents. Now I'll tell your school. Now I'll post it to your friends. Now the child is innocent, doesn't know what to do, and gets trapped further and further, uh, giving all kind of uh, obscene photographs and you know many things happen. It goes to pedophilia. There's a very infamous case of a girl, a very sad case. Her name was Amanda Todd. She was a she was a Canadian, a 15 year old girl, and she was uh, got trapped in this, and ultimately she committed suicide. And she posted a video online in uh, YouTube. Uh, and uh, she had a lot of uh, flashcards to show what went through her life and they're uh, very sad but that uh, that's what it is so grooming grooming bullying gaming there are many more solution is only one awareness for the child and monitoring by the parents so please get down to monitoring there are many ways of it you better do it and better do it now now I'll finish. These are my five key points. If you have listened to what I've said, some, uh, some people uh, who, who I could see in this panel have been pretty alert. Some people are uh, sleeping and you know looking here, there. So uh, they may know more than I know, but anyway, uh, that's their wish. So, uh, but if you have uh, listened carefully, uh, good for you. If you remember, even better for you. But even if you don't remember, please try to remember these five points that I'm going to uh, share with you. Uh, maybe there will be, uh, remember them at least. Then at least uh, my this spending time with you will be of some meaning. First is have a, always a mindset of safety and security. I told you from the beginning, different mindset, different world, all that is there, but a security mindset. Have it, keep it, and then work. Think secure, you will be secure. If you don't think secure, Second is avoid shortcuts, avoid greed. Greed is a human instinct. You know, so most of the financial crime which occurs in the virtual world is based on the human instinct for greed. So, ghar baithe aapko na lottery lagti hai, ghar baithe na aapko naukri lagti hai, ghar baithe na aapko rishta banta hai. This is what they will play on and they will then try to cheat you. So, don't have that instinct for greed. Have the motto that whatever we make in life will be through our own hard work, then you will be secure from this kind of financial phishing, financial crime, okay? The other is avoid shortcuts. Technology has given you a lot of benefits, as I said. You press any link, go anywhere, you 
just talk to anyone on the phone you uh, download any file this these are all shortcuts please don't follow them shortcuts leading you in the right direction not always possible follow the long path follow the right path follow the secure path you'll be safer suppose you uh, a link is given you have to go to state bank of india maybe maybe why can't you open another tab type out with your own hands www.sbionline.com and enter you will enter the exact uh, sbi site otherwise you might have pressed a link you might have gone to the fake site shortcut don't try to follow it when you leave facebook and gmail why don't you just log out why do you just shut it up so that when you click it next time automatically sign in why can't you spend that 5 seconds and type out that um, uh, That's one of our, another mantra. The third is think before you act. What you're sharing, posting, liking, forwarding, just think. Think for two seconds. Think what you're doing. Once you think and do, I'm sure you will not make a mistake. If you are doing everything in a hurry, probably you'll make a mistake. Socha samjha nirnay jada tar sahi hota hai. Jald bazi mein liya nirnay jada tar galat hota hai. This is an old adage that we have learned when we were kids. Next is have full knowledge. This is the age of information. Keep as much information as you can. Use as much information smartly. You'll be safe, secure, and happy. Everything. So have full knowledge. Last is in cyberspace. Do not trust everything back blindly. Basically, you're interacting only with the screen. There is no situation. There is no person. There is no um, uh, circumstance. Nothing. It's only a screen you're interacting with. This can be shown. Anything can be shown, and uh, everything cannot be the truth. Uh, this is my Facebook page. Now, I do a lot of research. I write a lot of articles. I have been, you have been told, so I post it on this. If you have any, uh, if you have time, come on this page www.facebook.com/blackribbon-initiative. This is the name of my initiative. Come here, like this page. Once you like this page and your updates are on for this page, you will receive uh, whenever I post something on it. Okay, so uh, come on this page, like it, and receive updates. If you have time, read it. If you don't have time, read it next time. But at least you'll have access to good quality cybersecurity information. My WhatsApp number and my email. I told you a lot of people call me, a lot of people email me with their problems. If I have any advice, see, I don't guarantee any help. I guarantee advice and guidance. If I have any advice and guidance, I will give it to you. And uh, if it is of any use, please use it. People contact me from all over the country. If you have any cyber um, uh, webinar, if you want to organize, you belong to some organization from some other part of the country. If I have time, I will take part in it. Why not? And, uh, it is not part of my job. I don't get anything for it. Neither am I going to ask uh, Ravi and all that for anything. I don't need anything. I just want to spread uh, uh, this uh, message to as far as I can. Uh, if my coming on this program has helped even one person to be secure from any cyber crime which may have occurred with that person because uh, you are not part of this program. And if my coming has saved one person, I think my coming here is of some use. So if you have any webinar. and have a great Sunday and any one of you have any question now is the time you can ask thank you so much have a great day thank you thank you so much sir for this uh, wonderful session sir I can tell you how the responses we are uh, receiving comment box of uh, YouTube and Zoom um, now I would like to request the participants if they want to ask something uh, to uh, Varun sir if somebody wants to ask, they can uh, raise the hands by clicking the hand raise icon. And also I request all the participants to start their videos for uh, the attendance. So I think in chat box, we have some questions. Mm -hmm. Can I uh, read it on behalf of them? Yeah, please. So one question uh, Dr. Meeta is asking, what if a person has already become a victim of cyber fraud? What should be done to deal with it? Her email ID was hacked some time ago and the hacker sent mails to her contacts asking for money. And she lost all the important information from that mail ID. If you have already become if you have already become victim of crime, then the next stage is uh, to report that crime. You know, that's very simple. You go to your uh, local police station, you go to your cyber cell, whatever is available, and whatever you feel will be able to help you the most, 
please go there and uh, make a report and uh, then um, see take these these organizations gmails and facebooks and all that they give get requests from law enforcement all over the world you can imagine how much is the traffic of requests and uh, for information that they get it's it's amazing so uh, they try their best to give it as fast as possible i've talked to the top executives also and uh, in india also whoever is uh, looking after the cyber uh, crime part satya his name is so i have talked to all of them and the amazing amount of uh, traffic they have for uh, sharing information it takes a little bit of time but uh, the information will be uh, obtained if uh, and then uh, the action can be taken okay sir sir uh, one of the participant dr pradeep uh, his director mmc amdabad uh, he is writing uh, thieves are finding newer ways of cheating people what is the solution according to you what did you say i didn't i didn't get it thieves sir, thieves are uh, finding newer uh, new ways for cheating people what is the solution See, according to you dekho uh, 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 being a police officer i can tell you one thing very clearly in the real world if someone has to commit a crime on you he has to be he or she has to be physically stronger than you then they will be able to commit that crime on you but if there is a cyber crime in the virtual world crime somebody has to commit on you then uh, they have to be smarter than you uh, you know this not this so uh, they have to be smarter than you so uh, what is your motto you should be you should be smarter than them so uh, then only you will be safe so i have said so many ways of doing it uh, phishing which i told you is the biggest cyber crime and basis of many cyber crime i have told you the solution for that also that uh, no contact with the unknown and all those kind of things please follow these advices and i'm sure uh, when you started this uh, session with me uh, if you had any idea i don't know but if you do not have much idea about cyber crime uh, securing yourself then uh, you have taken uh, some uh, steps in the right direction so uh, see 100% guarantee of security cannot be taken by anyone uh, you can put thousand locks in your house but that doesn't mean it will not be burgled so uh, but your efforts should be as uh, good as they can be and the rest up to god okay sir uh, sarveshta one of the participants sarveshta is asking what to do if someone threaten on social media threatens threatens threaten yeah if somebody threatens you on social media you might be having the id of the person who is threatening you you know uh, then uh, see it all boils down then ultimately you should report it first of all you should report it to the social media platform there is a report abusive button generally given in most of these uh, social media platforms you report that abuse uh, report abusive so that that uh, uh, id can be taken down and uh, by the uh, people who are or who run that uh, that outlet and secondly if if the abuse is very uh, 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 matlab uh, threatening or it is very to uh, disturb somebody else but all kind of people make up this world uh, you must report it that's the second stage first report to the site so that such sites can be blocked and such site can be taken down and second stage will be to report to the law enforcement so that they can be punished thank you so much sir uh, if anybody else wants to ask okay thank you so much sir once again uh, the success of this event is an outcome of this energizing session by our keynote speaker dr varun kapoor sir i on behalf of inspire research association convey my heartfelt thanks for accepting our invitation and this wonderful experience sir thank you so much sir once again and last but not the least i wish to thank the audience for being a part of our initiative and making it a successful one thanks to all for your valuable time and i have already posted the feedback link on uh, comment box of youtube and zoom so please you can submit it by today for the e certificates thank you so much thank you so much sir once again thank you ravi see you bye